Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-Level Further Maths. Here we're looking at modelling with matrices, so we're answering questions to do with real life problems um, so we can answer questions from exercise 6f. We're going to split this exercise into two parts, one where we're effectively solving equations um, using matrices and then one where we're looking at intersections of planes um, using matrices as well. So in this video here we're going to be looking at solving 3 by 3 equations specifically where we've got an x, y and a z variable and then um, using matrices to solve that. And then specifically we're going to be using inverse matrices to solve this. So if we've got some matrix times x, y, z we can apply the inverse A matrix onto the other side and then this right hand side is completely calculatable, um, calculable. Um, so we can find out the values of x, y, and z, which is effectively what we want to do in a question. Okay, so the question here is this. We have three equations, minus x plus 6y minus 2z equals 21. We have 6x minus 2y minus z equals minus 16. And a third equation of minus 2x plus 3y plus 5x equals 24. So these are our three equations. What we want to do is find out the values of x, y, and z given and that will satisfy all of these three equations. Now what we can do to start with is we can translate this problem here into a matrix type uh, question. We can see here that this is how it would work. We'd have this exact thing here. So we'd have a matrix timesing by x, y, z will give us a, um, a, a matrix here, 21 minus 16 and 24. And the question is, well, where did this matrix come from? Well, if you see, if we times the top row here by this first column here, what will come out is exactly this equation here, minus x add 6 times y add minus 2 times z. So this first row here is effectively the coefficients on this first equation. The second row here, if we multiply out the matrix, would be 6x minus 2y minus z, which is exactly what we have here. And on the third line here, we have minus 2x plus 3y plus 5z equals 24, which is exactly what we have um, as the third equation here. So we've formed this first matrix here from the coefficients on the x, y's and z's on our three equations. And then we've got equals 21 minus 16, 24, and that obviously comes from what these um, three variables equal. Okay, so now how do we solve? Oh, yeah, this is exactly what I was explaining. So how do we now solve this equation and find x, y, z, find the values of x, y, and z? Well, what we're going to do effectively here is we're now going to find the inverse of this matrix. We'll call this matrix here A. We're going to find A inverse and multiply at the front. So we're going to find A inverse and multiply at the front of both sides of this equation here, this matrix equation. Okay, you can see where all of these different parts come from. So what we need first is to find the inverse of this matrix here. Now, here is where you can use your calculator with, um, with great efficiency. Because the inverse of this matrix is within a contextualized problem solving question, we can use our calculator to find this inverse without going through all of those five steps. So use your calculator and you'll see that um, the inverse of this um, matrix here is 1 over 189, 73610, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that's what we're going to be applying to both sides of our um, equation here. Apply this matrix to both sides. This will cancel out the matrix here um, and cancel out with itself. So it's just going to times by this matrix on the right hand side. And if we times all of these bits out, which you can do in your calculator as well, you just insert a one by three matrix um, and then times uh, matrix A inverse by matrix B, and you'll get this matrix here, minus one, four, two. So how does this help answer our problem? Well, on the right hand side, on the left hand side, sorry, you're just gonna have X, Y, Z is equal to what we have on the right hand side. 
Okay, this is equal to this. So here, x is equal to minus 1, 4 is equal to y, and z is equal to 2. Okay, so that's how we can solve 3 by 3 equations using inverse matrices. Something else that we can do is we can answer questions that involve a contextualized problem, form the three equations, and do exactly what we've done before. So in this question here, a colony of 1,000 mole rats is made up of adult males, females, and youngsters. Originally, there were 1,000 more adult females, sorry, 100 more adult females than adult males. Then it goes on to say the question here, it says, after one year, the number of adult males increases by 2%, the number of adult females increases by 3%, and the number of youngsters has decreased by 4%. And the total number of roll mats has decreased by 20%. And the question here is really find out how much of each type of mole rat there were originally in the colony. So what we're looking to do here is um, form three equations with three variables um, and an inverse matrix this problem. Now the three variables are obviously going to come from male adults, how many male adults there were, how many adult females there were, and how many youngsters there were. So we can effectively use an x, y, z to represent the number of adult males, adult females, and youngsters. Now let's try and form these equations. The first one is that there were originally a thousand, um, a thousand uh, mole rats in total. So x plus y plus z is a thousand. The next part of this sentence is that there were a hundred more females than males um, in this colony. So effectively, y minus x is equal to a hundred. Or we could flip it around and say x minus y is equal to minus 100. The more complicated equation comes from this paragraph here. We're going to have to increase the number of male adults by 2%. Now, how would we do that here? Well, if we remember 2% is effectively the same as a scale factor multiplier of 1.2. 1.02. 2 2% increase is 1.02. A uh, 3% increase, that would be 1.03, and a decrease of 0.4% of, of would be 0.96 times z. Okay, so all of these values here come from percentage change multipliers, and we're told that it's decreased by 20 from originally 1,000, so we've got 980 mole rats left. So these are our three equations that we're going to work with. Now convert this problem into a matrix type problem, and we get this thing here. And we can do our cal do, use most of this question on a calculator. Now, what we would do here is we would invert this matrix here, apply it to both sides of the equality sign here. So apply the inverse to both sides of the equation. What's a good idea is to write out the inverse that you're working with here. Don't just jump straight to the answer. So this here is effectively us calculating x, y, z. This is a inverse effectively. So pre-multiply by the inverse on this matrix of answers here. And we get 100, 200, 700. And it's a good idea just to do a double check of does this make sense according to our question? A thousand mole rats in total, yes. A hundred more females than males, yes. Uh, and it'd be a bit long to do that. So a quick check, you just have to check the first two in this case. So the final answer here is that there are 100 male adults, 200 male females, adult females, and 700 youngsters. All right then, so that finishes the video there. We haven't got space to do a... Um, to do a your turn question because there are a very limited amount of questions like this in the textbook. So I want you to go away now and have a go at lots of practice on these types of questions from exercise 6f, solving simultaneous equations using matrices, and then in this particular case here, creating the simultaneous equations from the contextualized question and solving it using matrices. Make sure you're really good on your calculator because that can save you a lot of time and make sure you're accurate with these as well. Alright then, thanks very much for watching.